It's fantastic you have the All Black skipper, Rich McCord, do a masterclass. And Richie, I know after 15 years playing this game, your game is so much more, but I want to just concentrate on the breakdowns. But before we do get in the situation, some scenarios, and she's going to help us do some demonstrations as well. That part of the game, the breakdown, so much debate um, before, after all the time. How much has it changed in your opinion? I think it, it, it's changed a, a lot in terms of, uh, I just look at some of the video when I first started, you, you got away with it <coughs> coming from, well the, the rules were you didn't have to come mm. through a gate for example, you could, if there's no rut you come from anywhere, so that's changed and there's a lot more leniency on you know, whether you're on your feet or not, it's 50-50 okay. whereas now it's a lot more strict and, and it needed to be because it's, uh, it's become a real real contest. OK, let's get into the nitty-gritty of that position, the breakdown too. Of course, both attack and defence, but I want to talk through a couple of situations on the field. One from the weekend, actually, when your team has got the ball, the scenario you're looking at is Kieran Reid juggling it, goes to ground, and Henry Spate, their wingers, coming down, but not quite on the ball. What are you thinking here? First of all, I thought I'd, I'd got left behind a little bit by Rido, um, and so I was worried about the tackler getting in a good position. So I, the first thing I thought, I'm going to have to uh, get there as quick as I can. And then once you're there, you've got to beat win the shoulder battle. So I was lucky he didn't get in a very good position, as perhaps he didn't quite get it right. Maybe being a winger didn't help him, but uh, so I, I aimed to get under him. And, and because of that, I was able to get rid of him. We'll get Goldie to help demonstrate that. The other one I want to talk about is the situation we see a lot, clearly in the weekend too. When you play Australia, Pocock so good over the ball, so strong. How do you clear a goal like that out? <coughs> if you let him get set, he's very, very hard to move. He's very good at it, he's very strong. You've got to get him early, um, so not allow him to get in that position. Once he's in there, uh, you haven't really got a lot of options. We can perhaps demonstrate uh, one or two. Well, one we are. We're, we're, we're going to do that. We're better. OK. Yeah, so this is the situation. Kieran Reid has put you were attacking. Yep. Kieran Reid's gone on, on the on the ground. So you down oh, there. Right. Goalie, oh, I am Henry Spate. Yep. Well good. I'm glad so, that you So I'm not quite to the ball, but I'm yep. beating you. So but I'm seeing I'm looking for to win the shoulder battle. So I'm looking at my threat. I'm not worried about the ball carrier. I'm looking at the threat. So I'm looking to get under your shoulders. And what you allowed me to do, then I can come up. Clear down. Yep. So okay. that's so I'm if you become ball focused, I'll just go to there. He'll go to there, you've lost the battle. OK, the other scenario, if you'd like to hop up goalie, Jeff Olsen is Pocock. Really strong over the ball. Now, this is a situation we see a lot in rugby, and it gets quite messy for our spectators looking at. How do you clear a player like Pocock, who's strong over the ball like Jeff is at the moment? Once he gets down there, it's really hard to win the shoulder battle. I've got to get right down to get underneath him. And we often say shoulders on backs is what you don't want, and I end up like that. So I've, and he's in a really good position. I can't move him, I'm just going to slide up. So about your only option you have when you get to there is probably go sideways. So actually pull him sideways out. And they call it a bit of a roll or something like that. Um, but so just to demonstrate that again... Not again, are you sure? Some players there. Are you, are you trying to physically wrap your arms around him like yep. in a, yep. a bear so hug? Once I've missed the shoulder battle, yep. I've got caught to there. And then I go, right, I'm going to need to do something else and hopefully... Roll he hasn't got up. the ball by that point. Okay. And I roll out. So well, I should have probably demonstrated it better than that. But Yeah, he's, he was going easy on me. Okay, Appreciate the other it. two scenarios I want to look at is when you're a defensive player, of course, we'll look at the monitor once again. This is a situation, uh, what, what happened in the game against the Blues. Owen Franks in this situation is making the tackle. You're the second goal. What are you thinking there? The first thing that goes through my mind, do I need to help out with the tackle? I'm coming from the inside. Do I need to help control that tackle? In that case, I don't. So then... Uh, the next thing I look for is, uh, is there space between the ball carrier and the supporting player. If there's space, I'm going to get on the ball. If there's no space, I'm probably just going to leave it because I'll get cleaned out and I take myself out. And just quickly, the last scenario is, of course, you've done this a lot in your career, to you making the tackle, bouncing up and contesting the ball. Is there any real good skill technique you're thinking of? I think the first one's mindset. So it's easy to make a tackle and lie on the ground because you, you, oh, I've done my tackle. I, I try and have the mindset of uh, the tackle's not finished, I'm back on my, on my feet. Then I'm either can have a crack at the ball or I'm back in the defensive line. And when you get back to your feet, if there's no one around and you're there, you can have a crack at the ball. If it's straight away you get cleaned out, well, you've actually committed some of the, their players as a threat. So um, I think that's a big one is mindset. And dominating the contact first, so doing the tackle right. So if, I, if I'm against Jeff and, um, and I've got momentum, then my, probably my first thing is to make sure I finish that, finish that tackle, because if I dominate that, it's going to allow someone else. Yep. Now if Jeff's starting to run away from me, 
and I get a leg tackle, well, that's probably a good opportunity because he may be isolated. Okay. He's quite quick, obviously, gets out of the way. I'm quick enough to get him, just. Just. <laughs> but then I'm on my feet because he's got away from his support. It's, I can't dominate the, the contact, but uh, I might be able to get in the second go. And the last scenario in the masterclass, I want you to demonstrate to everyone out there, players and coaches alike, if Jeff is on the ground, how you get yourself into your strong position, either straight-legged or split-legged, to contest the ball. So I've, I've arrived at the breakdown, and uh, their support players are a little way away. So I've seen daylight. That's what, what I look for, daylight. So I'm going to look at the ball. So the best thing to do is, for me is to get a nice wide base. It's Jeans Day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so nice wide base, and as we said with Pocock, uh, we want to win the shoulder battle. So if I'm up here, I'm really easy to be cleaned out. So I want to be down nice and low, bend my knees, and then on the ball. And um, so when they clean, they go over the top of me. That's, that's the ideal one. And if they do hit you, by the time you got it, you might be able to take the ball with you. Okay. So that's... Come up, Jeff. Well, there you have it, <laughs> folks. That is a breakdown masterclass from the best in the business, without question of that, the All Black Skip. Rich McCall.